What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool Career Mojo episode. In this episode will be post commentary because I couldn't do live commentary when I recorded these games. The first game is against Hull City. The FA Cup is a very important competition because the, in the Premier League we are not certain to win the title. We are at the moment in fourth place. Has centered around this game and, these talented teams. and if you enjoy these episodes and if you enjoy this series, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. So we played with our second team, Fabio Carvalho passes it to Jota who does a brilliant side st step uh, on the ball and then Carvalho's shot got blocked but Hull City also had their chance in the beginning of the second half it was a cagey game Vatarwendo gets his shot away from the edge of the box and he scores a rare goal Vatarwendo is leaving Liverpool at the end of uh, this season which is season 4 in this career mode because he's 34 years old now so his uh, rating go is going down and Philogene who is one of the most talented and most highly rated Hull City players was involved in that attack Kevin Callagher who got a rare opportunity to play made some good saves but Hull City hit the post in the 83rd minute they almost scored a goal and then Vatarwendo gets the ball after Hull City hit the post and straight from the counter attack of course I brought on some of the big guns like Salah, Nunez, Sovoslai, Gravenberg, Passi to Xavi Simons and with the outside of his right foot Xavi Simons scores an absolute banger to make it 2-0. This angle of the replay is absolutely brilliant and the Liverpool fans are clapping. Darwin Nunez and Salah from the bench were instrumental in the second goal and we win the game 2-0 so we march on to the next round and as you can see we dominated the game. We had six shots, Hull City just had three. We bossed the game and we really should beat teams like Hull City who are in the second division. Salah was the man of the match, absolutely brilliant performance from him and Vatarwendo scored which is I'm really really happy about that. Hull City don't have an amazing squad as you can see lots of 70, 75 rated players. So Arsenal went through on penalties and League, uh, Premier League readers Newcastle went through but Man City and Chelsea are out. So we get Man United in the sixth round in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. That is going to be a huge game and uh, this episode is going to be a real banger because I included six games in this episode so in the Premier League we can not afford to lose some games but I rotate the team again because against bottom of the table Middlesbrough we need to give some of the fringe players chances to produce players, but it's when he's in and around the penalty area that's when he's at his most dangerous when he plays little one tubes around his marker and uh, straight away Middlesbrough were on the attack in the 40th minute we didn't really muster any attack up until this point and then Middlesbrough hit the post they are fighting for their lives and in the first half stoppage time is when we get our first chance Harvey Elliott gets dispossessed and then I find Salah on the wing and Salah crosses it Jota his first header is saved his second header is almost saved but the goalkeeper can only parry it into his own net and Salah does his trademark Volta celebration. What a header, sorry Jota not Salah, so what a header by Jota. He is brilliant from headers and then Salah finds Connor Bradley who passes it to Jota who does a little shimmy. Luis Diaz to McAllister, oh my goodness McAllister hits the post, that was really unlucky. And then I make a big mistake with Curtis Jones. Uh, I passed it back and uh, we get dispossessed. Middlesbrough have a chance. Gonzalez to Billy Gilmore, but Kelleher makes a good save. And that was it. We managed to hold on. And back to back Gillian Sheets, great way to start the episode. So we grinded out a result with our second team. And Middlesbrough actually had more chances, but most of their shots were from outside of the box we created a 2.4 xg so we more than deserve to win the game and Jota got a man of the match award the Jota has been shy in front of goal he hasn't scored a lot of goals so I'm really happy that he got on the score sheet in this one and we are only four points behind Newcastle and we jump up to second place so this small one nil win was massive in the title race if we could win our game in hand then we could go one point behind league leaders Newcastle 
And now it's time for the Champions League round of 16, second leg against Juventus. We are leading 2-1 on aggregate, so this is why I rested a lot of players. And Tren Arsenal finally back from his injury, a seven-month ACL tier, and Vlahovic gets the ball. Juventus, as you could see, has an amazing team full of 87, 88 rated players and Gabriel Veiko hits the post so we got pretty lucky and then Soboslai to Gakpo and watch this shot oh my goodness if that goes in that would have been one of the best goals of the season and then Balogun the USA striker gets the ball I try to dispossess them and then Balogun gets it back after a great triangle of passes and Balogun makes it 1-0 it's 2-2 on aggregate Juventus are right back in this tie so we absolutely have to score now. We can't uh, just sit back and soak up the pressure anymore. Barcetic pass it to Xavi Simons. Soboslai to Nunez. Yes! What a goal! Darwin Nunez. Another brilliant passage of play. And Darwin Nunez back to his best. Back with a bang into the starting lineup. And then Xavi Simons too. Nunez again. Oh my goodness. How close you can b2 being 2-1 up that was literally inches away from another brilliant goal and then Robertson goes to the byline he passes it to Gakpo and there it is we turn the game on its head it's 2-1 now just before half time Juventus were 1-0 up now it's Liverpool who are leading 4-2 on aggregate this is now a much more comfortable lead but Balogun passes it to Chiesa just after half time and Chiesa bangs it in absolutely brilliant finish and Juventus are back in it it's 2-2 4-3 on aggregate can you follow along and Xavi Simons with a brilliant run Soboslai how unselfish to Cody Gakpo this was another fantastic passage of play and in the 73rd minute surely surely now it will be enough to go through what a tackle by i'm not sure it was sangari or somebody else and chavi simons you know we were five free off on aggregate so i tried to do a cheeky bow roll and chip but i missed it and then i got nervous because you know if uh, you went to score another one quickly then we could have been in trouble and then mccallister passed it to gakpo and he scores it's no it doesn't count it's offside really really unlucky but you know the most important thing is we are through to the quarterfinals after knocking out Juventus and beating them home and away by one goal very very impressive and we deserved it we had more shots more xg and we dominated most of the game Juventus took the two of their shots on target were goals and yeah Cody Gakpo got two goals Sobosley got two assists but neither of them got man of the match awards which is quite weird it was actually Balogun who got the man of the match award interestingly he had the same rating as Cody Gakpo so it was a toy cost uh, and Barcelona knocked out Bayern Man United are out that is brilliant and this side of the draw is still yet to be played and this next game against Chelsea is crucial Chelsea were also involved in European competition as you can see a lot of their players are very tired but they have amazing array of talent Enzo Fernandez, Nkunku, Madueke and Turns and field for this one and with good reason as Liverpool prepare to take on Chelsea who is going to prevail? And let's start this game on the front foot. Robertson start, passes it to Gakpo. This is a Premier League game, by the way. And Darwin Nunez releases Soboslai on the shoulder of the last defender. And it's not offside. And Soboslai bangs in another goal after scoring against Juventus, I think. He scores again. Brilliant side foot finish. And that's exactly the kind of start that you want against a big team like Chelsea. We are 1 0 up after five minutes. And Robertson again. He's bombing forward, he sees a uh, wait. Oh wow, Gakpo is not offside, I really thought he was offside. And it's Robertson to Gravenbeck, but his shot is saved by Ramiro. But this was a really, really solid first half. We restricted Chelsea to very few chances. But Chelsea are too good of a team that you can keep them quiet for a whole 90 minutes. And Madueke passes it to Enzo Fernandez. He gets it back. And Alisson, come on, dude. It's a, it should have been an Alisson save. He gets a hand to it, but he cannot keep it out. 
at the near post. I'm sorry, Alison. You should parry it onto out to a corner. So Chelsea get to go back. It's a gift from the goalkeeper, and then and Kunku is dribbling, and Enzo Fernandez is shot. Is saved by Alison. So we were now on the back foot. The momentum was with Chelsea. That Alison mistake uh, completely turned the game on his head, and then Rovella from distance tries his luck, but Alisson made a save. But then Chelsea were dilly-dallying on the ball, Xavi Simons gets it back, and Gravenberg goes into the box, but he fluffs his lines. I got too nervous, and I shot too powerfully, but Chelsea were the better team in the second half. Malo Gusto, their right back, I'm not sure what he's doing in the striker's position, and Alisson has to keep us in the game. Robertson knows how important that save might be in the title race, but Chelsea keep plugging away, but Xavi Simons gets the ball in the 89th minute, and Darwin Nunez is in the middle. He has a chance, but his shot is blocked, and we have another chance. Darwin Nunez from a corner, cleared off the line. What an opportunity to win the game, somewhat undeservedly we would have done, because the second half Chelsea were the better team, they deserved at least a draw from this one. First half it was Liverpool who were better, and then, you know, overall I think we could have won the game 2-1 because we had some big chances, but Chelsea on the second half showing probably deserved to get a point at least from this one, and not uh, good that we dropped points once again because Newcastle can pull away if they win their game in hand so let's check out the table and it looks like Newcastle have won their game now they are six points ahead of us we have a game in hand at Newcastle yeah they have beaten Luton Town and as you can see the Premier League table is really really tight even the relegation battle is very very close and now let's see the other side of the Champions League so PSG, AC Milan, Leverkusen and Newcastle went through and we get Paris Saint-Germain, my arch nemesis PSG always knocked me out on FIFA 23 in the Liverpool carrier mode so this is our time to get revenge for that and this is going to be an absolutely mouth-watering tie PSG still have Mbappe in this career mode so that is going to be very very interesting Darwin Nunez is our top scorer with 14 goals Salah has 7 but he has been a backup right winger for us Jota has 12 assists though which is really really impressive and Nunez has 7 assists as well and our next game is another huge one Man United in the FA Cup this is a blockbuster tie and as you can see Man United have pretty incredible attack but their defense and midfield is not as strong as ours uh, I'm starting our next our best That's team what we expect when Manchester United host Liverpool who's going to come out on top in this one Pajetic and Gravenbeck are the only two players who I rotate in my best team and Salah gets the ball, passes it to Soboslai and straight away we are on the front foot because in the FA Cup it would be so sweet if we could knock Man United out. Salah steps on the ball, brilliant! And Nunez! Bang! Another trademark, classic, hugely clinical Darwinian's finish and the celebration was class as well. Man United have an 87 rated Cameroonian goalkeeper Boye who is a youth academy player and then Soboslai steals the ball from the Man United player and Darwinian's gets it but Boye comes out and makes a huge save. We could have gone 2-0 up after just 20 minutes. That is crazy. Darwinian's has the ball he passes it to Soboslai and look at Salah at the far post. They chest it down and he scores! What a finish! Mo Salah, the Man United's arch nemesis, the Man United killer as they call him. Absolutely brilliant finish and Salah loves playing against Man United and scoring against Man United. He has the most goals against Man United I think in Liverpool history out of any player and uh, Robertson tries to defend against Anthony, he passes it to Fernandez, and Fernandez gets it back to Anthony, he does a brilliant body feint, and then a heel to heel flick, and Alisson once again concedes a pretty awful goal, pretty silly goal, it goes through his legs, but to be fair it comes from such a close range, I'm not sure if the goalkeeper is really at fault, I should have defended Anthony better, that's for sure, 
but we are still leading 2-1, so nothing to really worry about. And Trenox Arnold gets it. And Nunez in the middle! What a finish! Darwin Nunez scores his second goal. Absolutely brilliant, flowing, fluid counter-attack by Liverpool. And Darwin Nunez twists his ankle as he is scoring, as you can see there. Fantastic finish. And uh, we were still in the first half. Garnacho was going through and Alisson, thankfully this time, makes a big save. That was a really nervy moment and we are still only in the first half because the chances kept coming. Garnacho again straight at Alisson and I tried to go on the counter-attack but nothing came from that. Second half was more quiet. We jump into the 70. Second minute where Carvalho had a shot and then Williams, the left back, was playing striker there. What is going on? And you will see in the team sheet after the game that Man United played with a 4-2-4 formation in the second half. And one of the players, Williams, was the striker who is a left back. But Darwin Nunez has an open goal because Boye, the Man United goalkeeper, went up for a corner when he, they were 3-1 down. Absolutely crazy, but that's what happens if you are on ultra attacking tactics. And Darwin Nunez scores into the open goal after a brilliant solo. That's the first time I think on FC24 that I could score a goal like this, that the goalkeeper wasn't even in his goal. And from a corner, we could take the ball all the way. It was an even game in terms of chances, but Nunez scored a hat-trick. What a brilliant performance from Darwin Nunez and a fantastic, fantastic knockout demolition of Man United in the FA Cups. Yeah, Brandon Williams is a left back. And he was playing as the right striker, right central striker in the second half. So Arsenal, Nottingham Forest and Everton are the three other teams to go through to the FA Cup semi-finals. And we get Everton, a Merseyside derby at Anfield. What a mouth-watering prospect that is. And now we have some games that we need to simulate with the France national team, the European Championship. Qualifiers are going on, but these are not like challenging games. So I thought let's simulate them, Manu Kone scores the only goal, France gets a big win against the Czech Republic and then we play against Haaland's Norway who are in second place, unbeaten by the way, in this uh, European qualifier group stage and uh, we play again our best team, I rested Konate so he's fresh for the Liverpool games and um, we get a 2-2 draw, so we have qualified for the Euros but that will be only after season five i think so we still have a long way to go until we can do that and that's it for today's episode i really hope that you guys enjoyed this i had a lot of fun making this video thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this have a nice day see you later goodbye and you can see by the way some youth career players that i promoted just before the episode ends so enjoy that